Hey, shalom, shalom, brethren. Hey, this is Ariel from GMS Tampa Bay 12, GMS 13, Rulership Ba. I want to start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Brakatai Yahweh, Brakatai 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 Yahweh Shai, Call Halloyan like Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakak, Wadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone. Salute to Yaakim out there that puts the word in truth and sincerity. And shalom to your sisters that listen to meekness, quietness, and humbleness. And uh, today I just want to get into the subject of Jacob's trouble. And uh, and it was a subject that we bring out on occasion. And it's that time that I want to bring it out again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And uh, Jacob's trouble. Jacob being you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, who are the sons of Jacob, Israel, Israelites, okay? If you're a Latino, Hispanic, Native American, uh, uh, or Negro in uh, North, Central, South America, Caribbean, or scattered all across the world, you are indeed an Israelite. If your father, your forefathers stem from one of those lines. And, uh, Unfortunately for the nation of Israel, there's going to be a time of trouble that's coming upon the earth in which we're going to have to endure. And if you don't have the spirit of the Lord on you, the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh on you at the time of that trouble, then you're not going to make it. You are going to perish. You're going to die. And uh, if you do have that spirit on you, if you be one of the Lord's elect, then the Lord's going to save you. He's going to salvage you. And, and, and bring you into the kingdom of heaven. And you're going to get through those tough times that are about to come upon the earth. And a matter of fact, before I even read the Jacob's Trouble scripture, we're going to get into our favorite favorite chapter of the Bible here. 2nd Ezra chapter 15. Yes, 2nd Ezra chapter 15 again. We're going to keep going into this chapter until the end of time. 2nd Ezra chapter 15, we'll start at verse... We'll start at verse 4. Let's start at verse 5. Behold, say of the Lord Yahweh, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. So the Lord is going to bring these things upon the earth. And yes, this is a future prophecy. And this future that we're talking about is not far off. And if you go into 2nd Entrance chapter 9, another one of my favorite beloved chapters, it tells you to measure the time diligently. So if you look at what's going on in the world, on the news, you can tell that we're getting close to something that's going to be tough upon the people, especially of America, but upon the whole world. And if you be one of those so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, it's going to be an extra tough time for you because you're the forgotten people. You don't own anything. You have no money. Sure, there's some brothers out there that have a little this and a little that. But ultimately, on the whole, you, you Jakes or you sons of Jacob, you don't have much. So when that time comes, you're going to be fighting each other. And it's going to be a tough, tough time to be alive in America. So it says, Behold, say unto the Lord Yahweh, I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword, famine, death, and destruction. The sword being violence. Whether it be of, you know, the gun physical violence, you know, getting beat up. Um, you think of it, it's going to be in Jacob's trouble. That's going to be a part of Jacob's trouble. The sword. Famine. Famine is coming to the, to, to, to the, to the shores of America. Meaning that there's going to be no food, there's going to be no water. More than likely, it's going to come into the form of hyperinflation, meaning that this dollar, this, this dollar that we, the USD, okay, is going to crash and it's going to be worthless in a time near to come. And when that day comes and the dollar is worthless, try go try to go to Walmart and buy and, and and go grocery shopping. You want to buy three things? It's going to cost you over a hundred dollars. Maybe a piece of bread and a jar of peanut butter and jelly. A hundred dollars or seventy dollars or some something, something ridiculous. And you're still getting paid $14 an hour at your job. Which is normally pretty decent. It's okay. You can live off that. But in a time of hyperinflation. No good. 
a sword, famine, death. That's going to cause mass death. In a time of Jacob's trouble, you, it's going to be commonplace to see dead bodies lying, across, lying, lying upon the streets. You ever seen a dead body before? Well, get used to it. You're going to see many of them. They're going to be children, women. You're going to keep coming across them. You're going to have to forage for food. And in the midst of you going to forage for food, you're going to run across dead people that may have been laying dead for many days. And it's going to smell really bad. You're going to see maggots, flies, maggots. It's going to, you're going to smell it. You ever smell a dead body? You have to prepare yourself for it. You have to prepare your spirit for this. I'm talking to myself too. You have to prepare yourself for what the Lord is about to bring upon this nation. Death. You're going to see dead animals, dogs, cats. You know, people's pets. Dogs and cats, regular house cats. Dogs. People trying to eat them, but realize that it's something they really can't eat. Then you just see a dead carcass out there with his entrails strewn about. It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be a, a crazy sight. You gonna see you gonna see packs of dogs too. I'm gonna tell you that. You are gonna see dogs that you know people's house pets, people's dogs. They're gonna they're gonna form packs, and they're gonna go out searching for food. And when they see a people, a people, when they see a person, they're gonna go and bite his head off and eat him. Their natural instinct is going to start to take over at that point because nobody's feeding them anymore. So now, what are they going to do? They're going to form packs and they're going to hunt. And if, and 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 a, and, a, and the biggest prey they're going to see out there is you people, you f you frail and feeble people out there with their ribs showing. Those are going to eat you alive, and your bodies and your bones are going to be left strewn out across the damn street. Death, destruction. Ultimately, it's going to lead to the destruction of America. War. Foreign countries are going to invade this place, America, one way or another. That day is coming. Where well, you're going to see troops on the streets of America that do not speak English. And they're going to rummage your house. And they're going to take your food. They're going to take your wife. They're going to take your daughter. And they're going to kill you. Which is going to ultimately lead to nuclear destruction. These are the times that are coming to America. Let me skip down a little bit. Second Urges chapter 15 verse, verse uh, 17. It says, A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Meaning martial law. So here it is, you're gonna to try to flee your city because you know there's gonna be nothing but, but bandits and, and 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 troops out here and dead bodies and no food. So you're gonna to try to flee and go into a, the city adjacent to you. You might have to cross a bridge. Well, guess what? You're gonna to try to go into that city and what's gonna stop you? It's gonna be it's gonna be a checkpoint. What 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 hummers and shit sitting right there to block you. With foreign troops or, or or domestic troops with machine guns and, and if they see you if they see you you're dead if they see you if they even see you you're dead and there's nothing you can do about it whether you be an Edomite or whether you be an Israelite or any other nation you're dead trying to flee the city trying to come into a city or trying to flee the city you're dead if you be caught. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled and the houses shall be destroyed and the men shall be afraid. So everybody's going to be afraid. Men. Hardened men are going to be afraid. Because they're not going to know where to turn. You go to the left, death. You go to the right, destruction. You go forward, Violence. Turn around. You don't want to do that. Men shall be afraid. And a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. 
but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So it is going to be a time that's going to come to America and of course these other nations across the world in which there's going to be no food. So what are you going to do or what is your neighbor going to do? They're going to rummage your house. Whether you be in it or not, they're going to rummage your house and they're going to kill you and take your goods, spoil your goods. You might have a can of beans. You will die for that can of beans. You might have a half a bottle of you know, a bottle, it's a bottle of water like this, and you will die for that. You'll be killed for that. Something that can be dr drunk in, 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 in 15 seconds, 10 seconds, 4 seconds. I don't know how long it takes to drink one of those shits. You'll die for that. What is going to be a high commodity in them days? And if you've got it, somebody else needs it. And if you don't want to give it up, somebody's going to be willing to die for that. And also willing to kill for it. What will you do? It says a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. The same neighbor that you that you lived with for many, many years in that same house. He's going to turn on you and your family. You got a daughter. He's going to seek her out to rape her. That's what's going to happen. Your wife. He might have been scheming on your wife for many years. And now the time of trouble comes. And he's going to kill you. And he's going to take your wife. And then kill her. These are the things that are coming. Well, I sure you want to do my hair. I'm going to make this quick. These are the times that are coming to America, brothers. Sisters. Get it together. Get it together. And we're not telling you this because we're, we're trying to scare you. This is this is something that's said to happen. The Lord said this is gonna happen. So we'll get into the to the to the scripture of Jacob's trouble. This is Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Out of it. The time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob being you so-called black people. You so-called Negroes. You call yourself black. Which is stupid. Black means dead. Negative. Death. Evil. Dark. Okay. That's not a good thing to call yourself. You so-called black people. You Hispanic people and you Native Americans. Jacob. You're the sons of Jacob. The time of Jacob's trouble is coming. But who's going to be saved out of it? Who is ye shall be saved out of it? The elect of Israel, the elect of Jacob is going to be saved out of said trouble. You can't make yourself part of the number, but what you can do is, is, is do the will of the Lord. Which will make your chances really good. If you're really doing the will, if you're doing the will of the Lord in truth and sincerity, then there's a good chance that you'll be saved out of the said trouble that's about to come upon the earth. Follow Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai in truth and sincerity, and it's a good chance that you'll be saved out of the out of the said perils. Verse eight: For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts, that I will break his yoke from the off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds. And strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Because the Lord is going to eventually put our oppressors underneath us. The Lord is going to put our oppressors under our foot. And we're not going to serve them no more. They're going to serve us. But before that day comes. Before the day of, 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 of our salvation comes. We're going to have to go to a hard, hard tribulation. And if the Lord is not with you in that day. I'm sorry for you. It's going to be a bad time for you. Evil. But if you be part of that number, the Lord is going to have your back all the way to the end. Verse 9, But they shall serve the Lord their power and David their kings, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, save the Lord Yahweh. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed 
from the land of their captivity and Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet and none shall make him afraid. Nobody's going to be able to touch us. If the Lord is with us, who can be against us? None. The Lord's going to save us out of our, the land of our captivity. America, Europe, Australia, South America, Canada. You name it, we're good. If you be part of the number, if you be part of the 144,000 or the one third men, women, and children that are slated to be saved out of the com, com, coming destruction, then you're good. So with that, Lord willing, this was edifying unto the elect of, of Israel. I want to say, call Lord and like Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Salute to the Akim. Shalom to the sisters. And Moa Flabba Peace.